So, hey, what's the obvious reason? Well, the obvious reason is, think about your marine ecosystems. Marine or freshwater ecosystems. And can have a look at the salinity distribution that's shown here. In the top, you see a little sketch of the salinity structure. You look from the side, the river is on the left side and the ocean is on the right side. And you see the salinity structure. So there are freshwater species that can only live in freshwater environment. This is where the salinity is very low. So they are here in this, in this region. Yeah. There are marine species that live or can only live in marine salinity environments, which is here in this part. There are species which can adjust to changes and they live in the transition zone. This is the so-called brackish water. Like the transition zone between marine and freshwater. And then there are indeed species that can, like salmon, that can actually live in both marine and freshwater environment. They can cross these uh, uh, salinity grades. Okay, so now here's one example of a special type of an estuary, which is called the salt wedge estuary. And the salt wedge estuary has the largest ratio R over V, the biggest influence of freshwater flows from the rivers. The tides play a little role in this estuary because the relative significance of the freshwater influence is just so much bigger. What the freshwater influence do is they actually push very low salinity water out into the ocean, essentially. The, the salinity stays very low in the upper layer. On the other hand, you have a seawater layer, or a bottom layer, where the salinity is oceanic salinity. It's, not, it's undiluted water. You have a very sharp transition zone, and this is a very turbulent region because you have very, often very strong river flows, and they create lots of turbulence in this in this transition zone. And the important detail here is that there is a little inflow. This is a type of system where you have little inflow of marine water in the bottom layer. So it can happen if this, if there are some, some deeper seafloor depressions that the oxygen gets used up because you have no new water replenishing the oxygen levels in, in deeper bay. So now what's also shown in this little sketch are stations, one, two, three, four. And the bottom graph shows you how the salinity, vertical salinity structure look, looks like if you, if you uh, put in a, a, a CTD and measure the, the, the uh, salinity. For example, at station two, you measured here station two in the, in the bottom panel, panel is salinity is very low until you're sort of halfway through the water column, then you get a big change in salinity, and then you're in the, sal uh, the oceanic salinity, yeah, relatively high salinity. Okay, so this is one type of estuary, and I can only say it again. The salinity structure is almost steady state. It does not change much. You know, we, we move in and out a little bit with the tides, but it's balanced between advective and diffusive effects. However, you still at the same time have flows which are continuous flows of river uh, water into the estuary, an outflow into the, uh, into the ocean, and an inflow from the, from the ocean into that system. It's a very little inflow here in this system, but anyway. Okay, so the salinity, although it doesn't change much, is not an indication of flows.